around 400 years ago, an astronomer pointed his telescope to the sky and recorded his observations of the phases of Venus. His discovery would threaten the prevailing belief at the time that Earth, and not the Sun, was the center of the universe, and he was put on trial for it. A trial which would eventually result in his house arrest and an order to abstain from his teachings of heliocentrism. But how accurate were his observations exactly? Can we really trust the sketches of some random Italian guy with a fairly primitive scope? How did he record them? Did he project them or simply sketch out what he saw through the eyepiece? And what would this experiment look like if ran today with modern equipment? That is exactly what we're going to find out. Now, fortunately, it's pretty easy to figure out what exactly he did based on the sketches themselves. And it looks like here that he tracked Venus all the way from one conjunction where Venus was on the opposite side of the sun to the Earth, through elongation all the way to the second inferior conjunction where Venus is now in between the Earth and the sun. Now, actually doing this is going to take us several months because we're talking about planetary timescales here, but we should be able to see a very noticeable shift in Venus's phases as well as the size as it gets closer to Earth. And being the brightest planet in the sky most of the time, it's going to be super easy to identify at night, but whenever it gets close to conjunction, we're actually going to have to look at it during the sunset and potentially during the day too, which is where this gets a little bit more difficult. Fortunately though, some of our modern equipment even lets us find it during the daytime, which makes this so much better than Galileo must have had. But with all that out of the way, let's hop forward to when I actually have some data. And here is our resulting process lineup. I've just taken all of these through the normal Autostacker Registax workflow, some, in some of my other videos, but I've also got them lined up with the interval in between each, just so you can see how I've sort of tapered it off as we got closer to inferior conjunction, just to capture the, as much phase changing as we possibly could. But let's overlay Galileo's and see how he did. And it's actually like, it's actually really astonishing how well he has the scaling for all this. Obviously, I'm not necessarily taking the images on the exact same time intervals relative to conjunction as he was, but I, I am genuinely incredibly surprised at how accurate he is for his size of his observations. If he is just taking an observation and then sketching it, just looking and sketching and looking and sketching, then this is, this is kind of superhuman. <laughs> I also want to stress that that last observation that he has is taken when Venus is not that far away from the sun. So he may have actually been dipping into daytime observations just like we were there, but that would have been dramatically harder for him. Now that said, he did get one thing kind of fairly wrong here, and it's most apparent if you look in on that middle right image. That border with the shadow is very jagged, very similar to how he drew the moon, which suggested that he thought he was seeing surface features on Venus, which we know is not the case because that atmosphere is horrendously dense. Overall though, I'd say what he managed to accomplish and resolve with that fairly primitive telescope that he had is just incredibly, incredibly impressive. Like, he wasn't necessarily able to resolve Saturn's rings in a way that he understood that they were rings and not just bulges on the planet or two weirdly orbiting moons, but he was able to capture Venus in this level of accuracy here, and I just think that's incredibly impressive. Now one final perk from doing this project in the modern era is we can animate all these images, like this. which I love watching the solar system in motion like this. But that wraps things up for today, so... Till next time, guys. Thanks for watching.